Hello, this is Domenico Composto with Easynomics, and we're going to continue looking at competitive market equilibrium price and quantity. In this video and the next video, we will look at shifts in the demand curve. Our applied example will be the global market for coffee beans. Coffee beans as an input for firms such as Nespresso to, produ to produce their coffee capsules. So let's go back to about 2010. And we can see in 2010 that the price of coffee was trading at about $1.33. And then within a year or so, it rises to $2.96. So it, you know, it, that's almost over a 100% increase, right? It doubled in price. It just went over double the original price at $1.33. So we're going to try to understand how that uh, was caused by an increase in demand by Nespresso for the input of coffee beans. Approximately, Nespresso released their coffee machines and boutique shops uh, pushing this uh, product, which led to an increase in consumer demand for this output. But that also put pressure on Nespresso to increase their demand for the input coffee beans to make these capsules. So let's go ahead and illustrate this. So we'll label this scenario number three. Call this graph A. And this will be the global market. Four coffee beans. We want to keep in mind that in this case, coffee beans is an input for firms such as Nespresso to produce their coffee capsules. So this is pretty much an input market. We'll be measuring quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. So let's go ahead and illustrate our uh, demand curve, our supply curve, sorry. So here's our supply our global supply for coffee, and then we'll have our global demand for coffee. So here is S1 supply, and that we know is equal to our marginal costs of production. And here is the demand for coffee, in this case by the firm Nespresso, which is equal to the marginal benefit. So here we are at point A, which is setting the free market, competitive market uh, equilibrium with price at P1. And with the chart that we were looking at, we don't have to add a numerical value for our model, but since we're using that applied example, we'll say that the price of coffee was trading at $1.33, which is equal to P1. And that set a equilibrium quantity supplied and demanded at Q1, All right, at Q1. Quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. So S1 equals D1, which provides an equilibrium price at P1 and provides an equilibrium quantity at Q1. We want to remember that at Q1, quantity supplied is equal to quantity demanded. In addition, marginal cost is equal to marginal benefit. So MC equals marginal benefit, thus uh, this quantity at Q1 is allocatively efficient. And we are producing the combination of goods and services that are desired by society. When we, uh, we produce at MC equals MB, social surplus is maximized. So we want to remember that the distance between our demand curve and the price is our consumer surplus. This is what a consumer was willing to pay. Perhaps they were willing to pay $3.00. They actually paid $1.33, uh, so that is savings for this consumer. And the consumer in this case is the firm Nespresso. So consumer surplus is the distance between the demand curve and the price paid, what you're willing to pay versus what you actually paid, savings. And below that we have our producer surplus. which is the price received by the firm versus their cost of production. 
So the producer surplus is reflective of their profit margin. All right, so since price minus costs of production equals profit, all right? Also, we will remember, uh, and we will discuss later on, that demand equals MB, which also equals price, which will be equal to our average revenue. We will discuss this later on. Uh, we can also state that average revenue, or the, the average revenue received by the firm per unit of output sold, uh, minus the average total costs of production, equals profit. So these are the same thing. Price minus cost is profit, or average revenue minus average total cost is uh, profit. But for, for the sake of this discussion, we're just going to say price minus the MC, more or less, that is their profit margin or their producer surplus. Okay? Um, so that's our starting point. And I just want to highlight again that the demand is coming from um, Nespresso. So Nespresso releases their out, their machine. They release their new capsule machine, which is an output. And the consumer demand, consumer demand rises for that output. But for Nespresso, in order to satisfy the households that are demanding their output, uh, that causes Nespresso to increase their demand, right? Nespresso's demand, I'll just put D for short, Nespresso's demand is rising for the input of coffee beans. Okay, so again, in this input market, the demand is coming from Nespresso and the supply is coming from all of the millions of farmers worldwide that are supplying coffee into the global market. All right, so let's get started. Let's get rid of these notes here. You don't really need to label this. That's not necessary for this particular economic model. And we're going to have uh, the demand increase in just a moment. Okay. We don't need to have this label. That is fine. So this is our starting point. Supply equals demand equilibrium price at P1 and Q1, but demand by Nespresso for coffee rises. So let's say it shifts out from D1 to D2. So we're gonna label that D2, which is equal to our marginal benefit, two. And we're gonna hold price constant at P1 in the short run. And at that price, the Y demand it increases to Q2. So we're going to make a note that at Q2, since we're touching our demand curve at that price, it's being held constant in the short run. Quantity demanded is greater than the quantity being supplied at Q1. So here we have excess demand. Which is just another way of saying a shortage has been created. Okay. Espresso is demanding more coffee beans as an input um, in order to produce the capitals that are being demanded by consumers buying their output or the coffee machine. So we have excess demand or a shortage. Now let's also notice, let's pay attention at the quantity being supplied at a price of P1. The quantity being supplied at a price of P1 illustrates that the marginal benefit, you can see here that the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost, right? So at quantity supplied at a price of P1, the marginal benefit along that new demand curve is greater than the marginal cost. And we want to remember that when the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost, that's what we call an under allocation. Okay? Under allocation of coffee beans being provided by coffee farmers versus what is being demanded by firms, Nespresso in this case. So it's allocatively inefficient. Okay. 
Okay. So at Q1, the marginal benefit is greater than marginal cost. Um, firms would like more coffee being provided. Okay. So what happens? Let's just get rid of this. We don't need to um, highlight that, but we will be aware of it when we analyze this for paper one. Uh, since there, there's a shortage, that puts upward pressure on price. So price begins to rise, which incentivizes uh, coffee farmers to produce more along their supply curve. And as the price rises, the quantity demanded by firms, in this case Nespresso, decreases until we reach a new equilibrium at point C. Okay? So at point C, a new equilibrium price will be set at P2, and a new quantity will be established at Q3. Let me make that a little bit straighter. Oop, sorry. There we go, at Q3. Okay, so as the price begins to rise due to the shortage that's been created due to the excess demand, then we will see the quantity being supplied along the supply curve increasing from point A to point C, or from Q1 to Q3, while the quantity demanded decreases from Q2 to Q3 um, till we establish a new equilibrium at S1 equals D2. Okay, so that's our model to illustrate an increase in demand, how in the short run price is held constant, but then price rises from P1 to P2. The price mechanism is activating an increase in the quantity supplied by firms, and it's decreasing the quantity demanded along the new demand curve of D2. So some quick notes of what we want to discuss in our outline for a paper one. First, we're gonna highlight that we're at equilibrium, S1. Right, first, we'll be mentioning S1 equals D1, establishes price at P1, establishes quantity at Q1. You remember that at Q1, quantity supply is equal to quantity demanded. In addition, we're gonna also mention that the marginal cost is equal to the marginal benefit. So it's allocatively efficient and everything is uh, perfect. Then in the second part of our analysis, we're gonna highlight how demand increases from D1 to D2. Um, in this case, it is a firm increasing their demand, Nespresso, for the input of coffee to satisfy the taste and preferences for the coffee machine um, by consumers. And uh, we're gonna hold price constant at P1. So the price in the short run is held constant. And at P1, we notice that at Q2, which is the quantity demanded, um, it's greater than the quantity being supplied um, at Q1. So that causes price to rise. Here we have a shortage, and we also have an under allocation of goods and services because at Q1, the marginal benefit, as we mentioned, at Q1, the marginal benefit was greater than the marginal cost. So in the third part, we're gonna mention that price begins to rise from P1 to P2, and as a result, the quantity supplied, quantity supplied increases from Q1 to Q3, and then the quantity demanded falls from Q2 to Q3. And then we establish an equilibrium where S1 equals D2, and marginal cost is equal to marginal benefit. And at Q3, the quantity supplied is equal to the quantity demanded, and we're back at free market equilibrium. So this is gonna be my little outline to help you with my analysis. So let's go ahead and analyze this as we would on a paper one exam, uh, or a paper exam for the IB, for the old and the new syllabus that's just come out. As can be seen, we have a uh, economic model, a graph, which we'll call graph A, which is the global market for coffee beans, which is an input to produce coffee capsules for firms such as Nespresso. Uh, we have 
quantity being measured on the x-axis. We have price being measured on the y-axis. We have an upward sloping supply curve, which is equal to which is labeled S1, which is equal to the marginal costs of production. We have a downward sloping demand curve, which is equal to D1, which is equal to the marginal benefit. And where S1 equals D1, we have an equilibrium price established at point A at a price of P1 with the equilibrium quantity supplied and demanded at Q1. We'll also notice that at point A, the marginal cost is equal to the marginal benefit and it is allocatively efficient. Consumer surplus and producer surplus um, is maximized. Then as a result of households demanding more Nespresso machines, that causes Nespresso to increase their demand for coffee beans as an input to produce their capsules to satisfy the increased demand by households for their outputs. So demand increases from D1 to D2, which is equal to marginal benefit two. Price is being held constant at P1. At P1, the quantity demanded at point B is at Q2, while quantity supplied is held at Q1. We notice that quantity demanded at Q2 is greater than quantity supplied at Q1, which is excess demand, which is creating a shortage. We should also note that at, at quantity supplied or Q1 at a price of P1, the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal costs of production. So there is an under allocation of resources. Society would like more coffee being provided to satisfy uh, household demand for the coffee capsules. So the shortage forces the price upward from P1 to P2, which incentivizes uh, coffee farmers worldwide to increase their production along their supply curve from point A to point C, or quantity supply decreasing from Q1 to Q3. In addition, the increase in price from P1 to P2 results in a decrease in quantity demanded along the demand curve from point B to point C, or from Q2 to Q3. Thus, at point C, where S1 equals D2, right, we're right here, where S1 equals D2, a new equilibrium price is established at P2 with quantity supply and demand equal to each other at Q3. We also notice at point C that the marginal cost is equal to the marginal benefit and we have achieved allocated efficiency. So this is an explanation of competitive market equilibrium and how a shift in this case of demand leads to a disequilibrium in the short run, an under allocation and a shortage, but the price mechanism rising from P1 to P2 reaches a new equilibrium at point C. And that's it. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment and please like and subscribe. There will be one more video after, um, uh, in this series looking at a decrease in demand. Thank you so much.